This is the 201st episode of Cloud Focus Weekly for the second week of December 2014. This episode is titled Stand Excited. Cloud Focus Weekly is brought to you by Arcus, and we are hiring. If you're a Salesforce consultant and want to be part of a unique and growing company, send your resume to careers at arcusinc.com. Actually, if you're not a Salesforce consultant but, are, but want to become one, uh, maybe send your careers at arcusinc.com as well. I am your host, Jason Atwood, and joining me, co-host 201 times, we're over the double double trouble of our 200th episode, much debated, much maligned episode, but now we are here, so let's hello, celebrate Ju- this one. Hello, Justin Elstein. 201, celebrate. Celebrate is awesome. Admin 201. Not even called 201 anymore. Uh, what's it called it's now? It's like 211, I think. 211? All right, we'll yeah. celebrate 211. All right, so let's. Uh, we have an agenda today, full of agendas. That makes no sense. We have the blog post of the week. We have uh, an article on three app exchange tools every Salesforce admin should use. We have a uh, some news on HubSpot launching a CRM. Uh, I have some st- I have some stories to tell. And then we have a Steve Jobs story. I guess that's part of the stories. Then we have a Steve Jobs story, which I just thought was funny. You have a story to tell? I've, and it has nothing to do with Steve Jobs. Is it about Jobs. you? No. Yes. It is about you. So we're going to um, get your personal But first, I want to say, here? if you are listening to this podcast, I have figured out what was wrong with the feed. What was wrong? Somehow, some way, the other providers, like the Instacast and Downcast, picked up the Cashfly feed, not the Google feed, like the Google feed. Uh, feed burner feed oh so you should be subscribed to the feed burner feed which is what itunes uses and what i think we point to well, on people all, who are on, listening to this are in all likelihood no not true no the not true they could have they could have clicked on facebook or twitter or whatever oh, that's so true. i'm saying that you need to resubscribe so if you just go into your downcast or instacast and just go go find cloud folks weekly hit subscribe and then you'll get oh, the new sounds, feeds that sounds terrible yep Oh, because somehow they come were on Instacast and Downcast because they're in there now as didn't we the tell feed. them which feed? we didn't No, They just picked it up. Yeah, that's our fault. We're no, sorry. They pick it up. We, how's but how would you tell them now to do the feed burner one? No, they have. They went all now. They have the Libsyn one. Oh, they don't go to feed. So burner, I sent them emails saying. saying to do it on the feed burner so that would never happen again. But reality of us leaving Libsyn anytime soon is probably slim to none. So. So resubscribe. Oh, man, the challenges, the trials, the tribulations. Hey, you want you want better service? Pay for it. This podcast brought to you by the letter F for free. <laughs> Say A for Arcus. Uh, all right. So um, anyway, so and I will be shutting down the other feed. I mean, A, it doesn't work anymore, but I'm going to be shutting it down. Like I'm turning off Cashfly, so get your last thing soon. Um, let's talk about, we got a blog post of the week called, or the blog co- post of the it's week. It's called getting users excited about using Salesforce. As two, that's users and using. That's good. So this one actually was launched, published today, I think, as I published it. Pretty sure. Um, and it's about, uh, adoption. Um, you can never write, I would say, if anything, if you're a services company, you basically spend all of your time thinking about adoption. So we can never write too many blog posts about adoption. Never run out of ideas. It's kind of like if you read, like, top 10 tips for weight loss. Like, you know, like, you can never top stop. Top 10 things you're thankful for Salesforce in 2014. <laughs> that was the worst blog post of 2014. <laughs> Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Um, my, my, my top 10 things <laughs> is that, that there's <laughs> Al Gore. I'm so happy for Al Gore. Oh, Lightning man. man. <laughs> Lightning man. Uh, Drones. Dreamforce swag. Um, so anyway, this one is about adoption. Um, and give some, some hints and tips on what you need to put your time and effort into. Um, some interesting things like early buy-in um i would say it's definitely better to get people who are invested in the project invested in in salesforce early um some of my most successful podcasts of podcasts most successful projects have ended up because people are you know really uh, engaged 
Um, the one thing she does say, and I didn't make her change this in the blog post, but she did. She says, "Why about, would you make her change?" Well, because I don't really agree. Change. Why would you not suggest a change? Well, I didn't. Okay. I didn't need to suggest. What, what might you? It was a hands-on training. Yeah. So there's two ways to train. Well, it's probably more than two, but the one way to train people is to like get them in a room, right? Everybody at the computer, and say, "Okay, kids, I'm gonna do something, and then you do it." Right. Yeah. The other way is to say, "Okay, kids, pay attention to what I'm doing." And learn from what I do, and then you can go back to your desks and do it for the rest of your lives. I'm more on. I like to show because I think, I think when people are trying to pay attention to what you're doing and doing, they get lost very quickly. So I like to show, like it's like a movie. Watch the movie, and 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 get the concepts because I'm going to show you what you need to be looking at, not what you're you're off like playing with your chatter profile. Yep. So, but I've she's, done I've done three methods. What's the third? Well, the third is the hybrid, which I actually think is the most effective. Okay. So the third is you guys sit and watch. Yeah. And then do an exercise. Repeat. Mm. Like actually do what I just showed you. And if you have any questions, ask them and I can walk over and help out and that kind of thing. Right. I agree. Like sort of hands on following along. It really depends on the people you're training. That's true. If they're if they're gonna be able to, you know, if they're if they're a somewhat technical bunch, that is actually to me a better approach. Yes, because they can like the technology is not scary. You're over that hurdle, and really, it's all about um, like they kind of get the technology intuitively. So it's about training them how to use the technology appropriately. Um, for those who are a little like adverse to it um the notion of having them sit there learn a new way to do things and learn a new technology at the same right. time is a little over like you end up sort of like being like a robot you're clicking but you're not comprehending right. why you're clicking so when you go have to do it by yourself um it's a little more difficult in the end though the system should be designed in a way that's so easy for the end user that it should just be about like explaining the the new process that you've put in place right or the concepts that are tough to understand i mean i don't know how many times i've explained leads versus accounts and contacts i mean it, i i could just record myself and just say okay playback tape on me talk. it's something that people struggle with you know struggle with as a concept um but ultimately i like the both and my other tip for training is is the um it's called the open session so i like to train users I then get them on board, like give them usernames afterwards. So say, okay, and now you have homework, right? So you have some stuff right. that you need to do. And then a week or two weeks afterwards, you say, let's do an open session. This is where we all jump back into a room or on WebEx or GoToMeeting and come back with your questions. Come back with your feedback. Come back with what you saw or struggled mm -hmm. with and let's go through it, right? Because a lot of it's going to be repeating, but it's also going to be someone might ask, hey, I didn't get where you downloaded you know, the Outlook connector or – you know, can you explain what happens when you convert something? Or I had someone the other day said, oh, you know, when I convert a lead, you know, I went, I converted a lead and then I went in and I added an opportunity and then I noticed that it had duplicated my opportunity. <laughs> like, and I, so then I showed right. them the little clickety box that says, don't create an opportunity when you convert a lead. So um, anyway, so that type of stuff. So that is at blog.arcasync.com entitled, Getting Users Excited About Using Salesforce. And then the graphic is... I don't know. Pretty generic. It's but one of those, you know, it, yeah. color people with the blocks, things. The rainbow colored people, like the red one. Well, they're the one, actually the, the they're white, green one, but they're with color. Oh, blocks. the color blocks. Yeah. Sometimes the people are different colors. Sometimes the blocks are different colors. Those are like it's those like, ones where you search for like collaboration. Yes. And you get like the cir the people in a, in a circle, circle. Yes. In I think we've used a lot of those. We'll probably get sued soon. I don't know. I feel like those are just like everyone uses those maybe they're just out there on the web uh, you see a deck that talks about collaboration it has one of those it has at least two of people those. in there um next up is a blog post on on uh yeah narrow, narrowly avoided that uh does design it does it i feel like this is design it design oh design it d-e-s-y i don't know that for a fact but doesn't that design sound it. better sounds better than that and it's uh 
It's from Jenny's Admin Tip, number 11. Number 11. So I haven't read all Thank you, Jenny. 11, but Jenny says three app exchange tools every Salesforce admin should use. And the only reason we're picking this is because one of them is the permissioner. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless. Um, Shameless. I funny. just want to read the last sentence. Okay, go ahead. Of her little blurb yeah. about the permissioner. And then we'll, and then we'll the mention other the other apps. Yeah. So this app can be installed from the app exchange in five minutes, and you could be on your way to mass assigning permission sets in less than that. Less time than that. Yes. Less that's, time than that. That's thanks. a good one. That is a good one. Nice um, review. Not on the app exchange, but in a blog, which we, we like will certainly take. On the app exchange. We like both. We'll certainly take someone blogging about our tool. No, like free that. tool, free on the app exchange. Free. And now we'll talk about your blog, and we'll uh, yeah. we'll talk about the other two tools. So Dupe Catcher, yep, is one of them. I wonder <laughs> is Dupe Catcher on its way yeah, out? Yeah, I mean she kind of even wrote this. You know, Dupe alerts arrive soon, which is currently in beta. So. Um, not. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen to apps such as Dupe Catcher or Dupe Blocker. I wonder. I think they just have to go higher end features. Yeah, they got to be like that thing can own the 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 one that's like conga and quotes. Yeah, conga still wins. Yeah, quotes is terrible. Right. Sorry, kids. Quotes are awesome, but not really. No, because they can generate that one PDF, like Whoa, with the template yeah. and the. Well, the syncing of the line items is pretty neat. That's, actually, that's it has some neat. nice functionality. Yeah, but I'm saying the generation of the PDF, the document generation capabilities of Salesforce, like that PDF or just standard mail merge, which I haven't seen used in a very it very long work. time. It doesn't. It's like, it supports like Microsoft Two. Office is that two. a thing? Yeah, it's not a thing. Office um, three and I will, IE six. I will say the last one she mentioned: uh, login as any user. This is uh, this is a, both a feature I love and a feature that frustrates me. I love it because you enable this feature and then you as an admin can literally go in, look at the user, and then log in as them. To be clear, not an app exchange product. Right, right. No, this is a you have to put okay. in a case. Well, I just want to be clear because the you know she and she said that too. But this was a Jenny. A, get on the ball. Well, no, she said that All right. in in here. But right. this is a three app exchange tools, and this is the fourth thing that she mentions as a little bonus. Okay, um, but yeah, it's a um, great feature. But you always have to put in a case to turn it on. Does not make sense. And we actually talked to the guy, and he, you know, who seems was like this. an audit thing and a compliance thing. Like you must put in a case to request this with your business case and confirming that you are the admin for the or i mean think about if like someone was somehow able to like get in as as an admin like they found their username and password somehow yeah somehow. I think there's a lot of security that would well, stop that from just happening. accidentally nah, or still lots of things that would someone stop that was happening. given the permission to um you know um customize application okay and modify all data and maybe a couple of those other really big perms out there. Yep. Um, you know, maybe this would have to be some special permission that quite literally only the system administrator could do. Like only if you had system admin profile or something like that. But I feel like there's a good enough reason to have to open up a case. Yep. I personally feel like there is. Nope. Like this is a big enough thing to be able to log in as another user to warrant going a little bit extra, just a little, not that bad. Um, yeah, I, I mean, not it, that it big happens, a deal. but you have to wait for it. Now support's gotten better at just enabling it. They used to then come back and why do you want to do this? And you're like really? Because I asked for it. Don't I just don't I don't like features you have to put in cases for. They should all just be clickety box. You want to audit it? Fine. Put in that user, and you have to sign something. It's like when you uh, when you refresh a sandbox. It's like copy and paste this sentence that tells not you. Not even anymore. Not now anymore. It's like check a box. Yeah, check it's a box. Awesome. Next up, um, so this is a little bit on the. I mean, I was just in Puerto Rico this weekend. I haven't so read this. Maybe this didn't. This happened, but I saw this this morning and kind of interesting. HubSpot, mm -hmm. makers of a competitive product uh, to Pardot. Uh, which Salesforce bought as part of the um, big uh, purchase of uh, Exact Target, which Exact Target had just bought. So wow, we're getting very deep. But HubSpot 
which used to be big on the partner side with Salesforce, used to be like on the main floor at Dreamforce, used to be all over. Um, as soon as that exact target thing went on, I, I feel like, and maybe there's no actual evidence to this, I feel like HubSpot kind of pulled back a little bit. The marketing cloud, you mean? Yeah, basically when someone said, hey, well, Salesforce said, we're going to go do this ourselves. So in a retro, we're going to do, oh, yeah, we'll come right back at you. HubSpot, HubSpot announces its own CRM. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of interesting. Um, actually, there was an article. You know what? We should talk about that instead. Maybe we'll leave that for next week. There was a article the other day that I, that I tweeted out um, about Salesforce. Uh, it was like the doors open for Salesforce competitors. It was about like three new CRMs that like that are hot new. They're all startups. They're all just trying to make their way. Um, but anyway, HubSpot making its own CRM. It's supposed to be free. It's, I mean, you know, I think it's just announced at this point. Um, you know what's really interesting in this article? What in the last paragraph? Skip the whole thing. I just went okay. to like the last or the last <laughs> section. Okay. Um, will this create a collision of biblical proportions? And, um, you know, the, the author here uh, says, likely not. Um, <laughs> I could by, ask a question. Will everybody die tonight at five? Not. No, probably but, not. But just the way he describes this, listen, by having been founded 15 years ago, Salesforce has the disadvantage of being a legacy product, in parentheses. The tired UI is proof of it, but has the undeniable advantage of holding hostage millions of client database entries into its servers for its customers. So, I mean, what an interesting sort of like Salesforce as legacy. Well, 15 years. I get it, but I always think of them as sort of cutting edge and innovative. And if that's like, if they're going to be legacy like this, then, you know, looks good for legacy. Like le when I hear legacy, I think of like a green, green screen. screen. Yeah. Jinx, you make up. Yeah, or like a client app that only works on my desktop that's connected at my office through an Ethernet cord. Ooh, that was the other article. I'm oh, put, look what I'm, I just did. No, I'm going to put another article for next week that we can talk about. Um, I just thought of two. Ethernet cords? No. Um, I, yeah, I mean, listen, I think the, the problem with Salesforce getting bigger and bigger and buying all these companies is that it will piss off some companies and there will be partners who, hey, we want to partner with you, will be kind of shunned. So as Salesforce tries to pull more and more functionality into the core, that means more and more partners are going to kind of go, wait, why are you doing that? You know, We were kind of in your ecosystem. And honestly, it's one of the reasons that being in their ecosystem is a little bit dangerous. It's kind of like being in the Apple ecosystem. You could go build an app, the coolest app for the Apple, you know, the iPhone, not so much on the desktop, but on the iPhone happens a lot. Oh, it did happen on the desktop a lot. And you go build the coolest app in the world, and everybody loves it, and everybody pays you a lot of money, and then Apple just rolls out iOS 9, and it just happens to include the exact same functionality. Yep. Usually not as good. I mean, honestly, it's usually not as good. Yeah. But it's close enough where people don't stop paying you for it's it. It's like WhatsApp versus iMessage. When yeah. they took a lot of what WhatsApp already did and locked it into well, WhatsApp has a uh, desktop version. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Pick next week. Yeah. WhatsApp desktop. We'll try it out this time. But see if you, yeah, it's WhatsApp desktop for that. For real? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that changes my life. It changes your life. It actually does. Yeah, that is that, amazing. That's terrible. That changes your life. For real? Yeah. They have that? Yeah. Does it cost any money? I don't care. I'm buying it. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sight unseen. All those Madden bucks you can save. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so you, you, I got a little reward for someone in my league spending a little Madden dollars. Oh yeah. I, I love, a, I love being able to keep tabs on you like that. I, I had a treat. You can't your, even I did it. treat yourself to coming back from Puerto Rico. Madden dollars. <laughs> I love it. I love seeing that you spend. Uh, money on Madden. I love money on Madden. Oh man! I never yeah, mind. We can't get. <laughs> this is not the Madden Mobile podcast. <laughs> it should be. It should be. <laughs> Maybe next week we'll do it all Madden oh, Mobile. What if we started a new podcast? The Madden well, Mobile we podcast. A third. A third podcast. It's like a crossover between the two. Yeah, it's cloud, but it's football. It's cloud football. Cloud, cloud football. football weekly. Cloud football weekly. <laughs> Featuring Madden Mobile. But only about Madden Mobile. Only Maybe about Madden sometimes Mobile. Maybe sometimes Madden. Maybe they would Although pay I love for it. 
Uh, maybe. Maybe they would sponsor This it. week sponsored by EA Sports. Right. Make it to Madden. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, billion dollar idea. I'm going to tell a little story. Actually, um, uh, this is just a funny story I read the other day. Um, and then, actually, I'm going to leave my story, story for my pick. about a man named Steve? Yeah. Um, so this is a, this is a, uh, I mean, I, the, the title of it, the Steve Jobs drop, Steve Jobs drops the first iPod prototype into an aquarium to prove a point. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a weird story. So, um, so he, I'm just going to read it. Uh, I'm going to read the little thing. The, the quote it says when engineers working on the very first iPod completed the prototype, they presented their work to Steve Jobs for his approval. Jobs played with his device, scrutinized it, weighed it in his hands and promptly rejected. It was too big. The engineers that explained that they had to reinvent, you know, reinvent inventing to create the iPod. That is quite the thing. I know. Reinvented inventing. inventing. That is a Johnny Ive right there. Johnny Ive voice. We reinvented inventing. inventing. We invented inventing again. And that it was was simply impossible to make it any smaller. Jobs was quiet for a moment. Finally, he stood, walked over to the aquarium, and dropped the iPod in the tank. After it touched bottom, bubbles floated to the top. Those air bubbles, he snapped. That means there's space in. That means there's space in there. Make it smaller. I just love it. That is that is just a great story. That's just like that's like classic Steve Jobs, but also kind of like just like a true story of like you cannot be done. And he's like, yeah, look, there's. I wonder what would have happened if no air bubble. I wonder if that was his plan. Or like if he decided like you know what I'm gonna put this in this tank because there's air in there and there's gonna be bubbles was he that smart or did it just spontaneously happen where there were a couple of bubbles and he said that means there's air in there like I wonder how that occurred because he might have just been like this is trash I'm throwing it in the aquarium yeah, maybe he seems a pretty smart engineer I don't know you've not I mean you don't read but I don't you, read if you read his his biography I've was seen pretty the good. Ashton Kutcher movie that is terrible. That's like it. that's like saying you you've seen the Avatar movie but haven't seen the cartoon. It's terrible. But I have seen it. Yeah, there's an Avatar cart- cartoon. Yes, the Avatar cartoon is very good. The Avatar movie is terrible and should be wiped from the face of the planet. I've never seen either. Okay. Um, I just I just anyway, if you haven't seen it, there's a new Steve Jobs movie. So apparently, I don't Ooh. know. Yeah, but it's like everybody's trying to be cast, but no one can be oh. cast. You're hearing about this. They tried to cast um, everybody, Batman. Yes, and he like Christian Bale. Yeah, Christian Bale, and he didn't. Oh, everybody's he been didn't, it. Didn't uh, Gary Oldman, I think, was one of the people. There was someone else the other day. Another one from Batman. <laughs> it's just, just a Batman going to, cast. Going to Batman. Um, but it's supposed to be a more serious take on it. Was it Christopher Nolan? Is he doing it? Is that why they're going to the Batman people? I don't know. No, I don't know who the the director is. Anyway, I don't really pay attention to movies coming out, but. Steve Jobs movies, I do. I, I say read the read the biography because it's just fascinating. He's, I mean, he is sort of an icon at this point. Um, he it it was it was not flattering. That's what I that's my feeling. It wasn't a flattering. The movie biography. wasn't flattering either. The movie was less than not even remotely close as the book. What was it supposed to be based on the book? Well, yeah, but it was it was a you know it was, again was it you take, you take six hundred pages you move it down to an hour and a half. No, but what I'm was asking close. is, was it, was it quite literally supposed to be? But based there's on lots the book of stuff like about his personal hygiene they didn't cover. Like he literally stunk. They wouldn't give him they a job in the in office. The yeah, I know they talked about it in the book. Uh, in the movie, I mean. Yeah, but it was like a line versus like yeah. he literally didn't work. He had to work at night because no one yeah. wanted to be around him. Well, he you're stunk. taking like 600 pages of text and boiling it down to an hour and a half of Ashton Kutcher. So. I think I just said that like literally a minute and a half ago. Well, yeah, I'm repeating it. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but I said it. I said it better. All right. Well, things. Uh, things that we can. Things are. Uh, uh, yeah. Things are breaking down here. Uh. <laughs> Two hundred. Uh, here we go. What are you uh, doing? Um, I'm writing my stuff for my next week. All right. Oh, so let's okay. get on to our bla- our picks of the week. Why don't you give me okay. your pick of the week? So, my pick of the week. I am using. Oh wow! Used, so it can't even be a pick. Then. It was sent to me from uh, a fan. Oh, yes. The one who sends you all this stuff. Oh, I love it. Thank you for sending me all my picks. You know how much I hate my picks. So, I am turning my computer around a little bit so oh. that you can see it. Okay. Please not right. unplug our podcast while you do that. Um, I'll try not to. My computer's not plugged into anything. So, I'm just going to get my um, 
screensaver going here just for a second. Just oh. so I can sort of lock my computer up. Yeah. All right, so it's locked. So you see the little like ring around my your head? My head there. It's not a halo. It's not. So I'm going to do this so that people at home could hear it too. So I've got my phone yeah. sitting on the desk. It could be in my pocket. It could be anywhere. It just yep. needs to be like in proximity. Well, it can't be anywhere because it's so it freaking be anywhere, big. You can't it put it anywhere. It needs to be in proximity of my, What's proximity my laptop. Um, you know what? It's connected via Bluetooth. Um, Bluetooth so however far that is. Okay. Um, so 34 And feet. I just knock on it twice. You can see okay. it's even the phone... Oh, there you go. <laughs> Turned it on. Um, knock on it like that twice, and it just kind of opens up the um, the the computer. Like it kind of puts in the password for you. It unlocks it. It's definitely a security flaw. Yeah, it seems like a bit of a like just like a. Sh- I did it more to like see how cool it was. Oh, it it's definitely cool. He literally just it was on the it was on the login screen. He we actually picked up the phone. Yeah, that was music. weird. So you don't need to knock on it. Maybe she called pick yeah, up. Yeah, you need to knock on it. So that was the weird part. So it's kind of in its lock screen. Right. And I knock twice on my phone. And, and yes, and the mics. Unlocks. Yes. We all heard that. Um so and and actually I think the better the better thing about this app is not that. Um I think it's actually the app on the phone where if I open the app it recognizes that it's linked to my computer. Okay. And if I walk away from my computer, I can um, I can actually lock it from here. Which is oh, like so if, like, like the proximity. Can, yeah, it has it. It's using the proximity, and I can actually like lock the computer from the phone. So if I walk away from it by accident, I could lock it. Right. Like if I you know if I'm in the office and I say oh I um. I should be locking my computer when I walk away from it, and um, I don't. I can do that from here. Although, at the moment, it's not working. But this did work when I was playing with it before. So it's an iOS app. There's an iOS app, but you don't need the iOS app. Interesting. And then the iOS app's like the the freemium piece of it, oh, as then, I understand it. And then there's then there's Knock for Mac, which is the one you install. That's the app that's free. Interesting. Is it yeah. using the new handoff technology, or I is have it... no idea what it's doing? I generally keep it off. I I just did it to sort of show you today, right. um, and to play with it as a pick. So excellent. If you're interested, Knock Software. If you go to Knock to Unlock dot com, you can watch a little video about it, and um, uh, you can get that downloaded on your on your Mac. And you can get the app on iOS to lock the Mac from uh, from only uh, three three ninety three ninety nine for the app for the iOS app. the The Mac application is free. I can't believe you're actually using an app. You bought an app. I bought an app. I know. You just don't buy apps. Yeah, I don't. All right. Anyway, um, awesome what's pick. your what's your knock for Mac and what's iOS? What's your cloud pick? So. <laughs> You love that this is a cloud focus pick. No, this is the cloud focus app pick of the week. What's your software pick? And it's neither a software nor an app, nor is it cloud. But it's interesting. After two hundred and one, probably more than that, over th- over two hundred and twenty picks, because I've double picked, uh, I've picked couples on episode. I've done. I think we did like a triple pick episode. Anyway, you did a picks episode. You did an all picks episode. You've also picked Spring Eleven. Well, it's still the best one. It certainly wasn't Spring 14. Ha! That was a piece of whatever. Um, all right, so I have been wanting to try out standing desks for a while. In fact, we had a, an associate who worked here at the at the Arcus who was big into it. And you know, I was like, all right, go try to do, build your own. And I don't know, yeah, I don't think he ever did it. Um, but you know, the theory is that sitting is really not good for you and that if you're sitting you should get up at least once every hour and go do something better than that you should stand up it burns three times the calories of sitting but clearly you know if you're you know working all day long it's tough to stand up right because you're working and usually you can buy big like standing desks the ones that are like built in there's one in ikea that i showed the part that should not be named it was like 
500 bucks and it was like automated and you could move the whole thing up or down. And I started thinking, geez, I really want a standing desk. But my desk at my office is built in. It's like huge built in desk. There's no, I'd have to get rid of the whole thing. Shelving units, it's massive. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. So I go, I'm like, why is there not just a, some sort of arm that just does this? And of course I go search and I find it. It's called the Ergotron WorkFit A. So WorkFit A, because they have the WorkFit, WorkFit S, but WorkFit A is for Apple. And it is a massive arm um, that holds a keyboard and mouse kind of on a level. And then up on another level is like a platform. And then you can attach an iMac, I think up to a 27 inch iMac or a, a screen. And and then there's a huge arm that kind of the whole thing goes down, the whole thing goes up, and so you can go up to standing, and then within seconds you can go down, you know, down to sitting. Um, so I bought it a couple weeks ago, um, and I've been using it, and I've really been enjoying it. I've been doing, um, I basically been standing up for conference calls. That's kind of my thing. So I find because I find that if I'm standing, I want to move. Like Me so. Too. If I'm standing, I don't want to just stand. I want to like move back and forth. So I'll go I out. Pace. I'll go. I'll look out the window, right? Which is a little funny. What's nice is because the computer is at the height of this of you know of standing. You can walk up to it quickly, do a little work, and walk away. So I'll be on WebExes. So anybody's on WebExes with me, this is not a secret. But I'll be on a WebEx. I'll be talking about something, and then as maybe the other person starts to talk, I'll just wander. Like I'll wander like a couple feet away, look out the window, come back, type in some notes or whatever. It's just you just you steadily start to wander, and so you definitely are more active, and that's a good time. It's an hour, you know, an hour long call, whatever, and then after the call, maybe I'll put it down and then you know sit down for a little bit. So, and it's definitely about endurance because you can't eventually start to start you know hurts to stand there for a while. Um, I don't think this is right for me. Well, you don't like to stand. I don't. I hate standing. So right, this is not going to be right for you. Um, but it's a pretty more good things solution. I don't like to do. I don't read. It, I don't stand. No. <laughs> I'm a terrible. It's got nice being. little features. It's really big. It's very. It's adjustable. It's this and that. It swivels side to side. So like even this morning, I I swiveled it I've to the side it. and sat on my desk, kind of like as. In the Why middle. would you sit? Well, <laughs> you're supposed to be standing. No, but then you're kind of like just leaning. That's on just the desk. silly. It's awesome. Um, it's got a couple quirks. Um, it's definitely big, and it definitely like. It, it looks big. It looks big, and it looks big on your desk, and it changes the way your desk works because it kind of comes out and down. So, like, there's a little keyboard holder, which is nice. Like, the keyboard and mouse holder is very big, so like you can put like stuff on either side. Um, I don't think it would work on my particular desk. I feel like my desk at at home is actually too break. small. It would just fall over. Yeah, it's kind of just like a little computer desk. Yeah, well, it's no good. Um, anyway, it's called the WorkFit A Sit-Stand Workstation for Apple. It's made by a company called Ergotron. It is up there. I think I found it for four four forty two at Amazon, four forty nine free shipping, whatever, something like that. It's, but it's pretty good. The one other little thing is that. I haven't quite figured out. It does move a little bit when you're typing. Oh, I not wouldn't a, like that at all. Yeah, not like a lot, but it moves a little bit. I wouldn't like it. Um, Yours also is not the one that would work like like I work with right. two monitors. You are two monitors. There's one that holds two monitors. Right. Yours is for one, one large monitor. Yeah, one large monitor, and then my my laptop stays closed like it always has on the on the desk. Now I work with the laptop open right. and another large monitor, right? And right. Two. So that's not going to help you. A because you don't stand. B because you stand, couldn't yeah. read the instructions to set it up. Well, no, I'd you'd have, have to you go. Set it you'd up. have to go get a goy. That would be call you. get a goy. That'd be you. I would just. Well, you just looked at me like that's a bad thing. I bring you up and be like, here, set up <laughs> fix, my desk. This, set up my desk. I'm watching this. television. <laughs> I'm sitting here on the couch, not reading a book. Wait, get a goy is not a bad thing. It's a new service. Okey this dokey. week on getagoid.com. All righty. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> All right. So uh, the Ergotron, it's the Ergotron Work A Sit Stand Workstation. Um, pretty cool. Uh, I would suggest, again, if you're looking for a sit. Otherwise, I mean, if I redid my office, I would definitely build in a standing desk. All right. Well, that wraps up this week. I think next week we have some new things to talk about. Um, 
is there is there are there Salesforce competitors coming out there? Is there a browser by BitTorrent? And we'll bring in some holiday cheer. So there's that. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Justin's mind just exploded. Holiday cheer. Holiday cheer. Holiday jeer. Did I write jeer? I wrote oh, cheer. I said it. I said All cheer. right. Follow us on Twitter. You can follow Justin at, uh, at Just Edelstein. You can call follow me at Getagoy. You can follow Arcus at, at ArcusInc.com probably. Facebook.com slash ArcusInc. Success community. You p- please go in there. Join the group. Again, you'll never miss an episode because it's always in there. You can turn alerts. We don't do a lot of stuff in there other than post the episode. So, like, you could – that's one group you could actually just turn on every post. Uh, LinkedIn, Google+, Plus, subscribe and review on iTunes and Stitcher, both which continue to work when we move product, pro, um, providers. Uh, and until I next need, week – I need to resubscribe. Which, by the way, I think next week might be our final – well, could be close to our final podcast of the year. So uh, until then, Justin and Jason saying enjoy those cloudy days.